My name is Moffitt Burris. I was a captain in uh, 3rd Battalion, 504 Parachute Regiment, and commanded I Company, which is one of the two assault companies that made the river crossing and captured the bridge at Nijmegen. I remember General Horrence explaining the critical situation of the British troops in Arnhem and uh, that if we didn't get there and give them some assistance at the bridge, that in a matter of hours, all would be lost. General Horrocks asked Tucker, can your lads do the job? Can they get the bridge? Colonel Tucker said, let me ask you a question, General. If we take that bridge, what assurance do we have from you that your tanks will be lined up for Arnhem in force? And Horrocks, and I can remember his remarks as if they were yesterday, said, my tanks will be lined up in full force, hell-bent for Arnhem, and nothing will stop them. That's not what happened. One gun stopped them. After we crossed the river and had 50% casualties in that crossing and made it up to the dike, knocked out the machine guns, and went on and captured the north end of the bridge, Four British tanks came across, the lead tank was knocked out, and the other three backed up to the bridge. And I went to the commander of that task force, which was uh, Captain Carrington, and said, why are you stopping? And he said, well, I can't go up there. That gun will knock out the rest of my tanks. I said, we will go with you and get that gun. He said, no, I can't go without orders. And I said, well, I'm giving you orders. Uh, an American captain giving a British captain orders went over like a lead balloon. So he said, no, I have to have orders from my British commander. The road from the bridge was on a sort of um, embankment. And I think it would have been quite difficult to go ahead. I think it would have been difficult anyway, even in the daylight, because you were a sitting duck for anybody who was there. But I thought at night, when we'd just sort of stormed the bridge, so to speak, it would have been very difficult to push through in the, in the dark. Well, about that time, my frustration was turning to anger. The airborne paratroopers in Arnhem were just hanging on by their fingernails. And that was known by Horrocks and the other troops in Nijmegen. And why they would let that one gun stop them is just beyond belief to me. And uh, as I was talking to Carrington, he was sitting in his tank, and we were having this argument about him not moving out. And when, uh, when he failed to move, and I ordered him to, and he still failed to move, I cocked my Tommy gun and put it to his head and told him if he didn't get this blankety blank tank moving, I'd blow his head off. And with that, he ducks down into the tank, closes the hatch, and sits there the rest of the night. Couldn't get to him. As I understand, Carrington denies that anybody pulled a gun on him, but um, his memory is not quite as good as mine if he really believes that. I bumped into Carrington at the 65th anniversary celebration at a reception that we're having for the Queen. And as he walked up, uh, General Petraeus and I were talking, and he introduced me to Carrington. And I said, well, we know each other. We met on the bridge 65 years ago. And Carrington turned and looked at me, and he said, oh, you're the chap that called me a yellow-livered coward. And uh, I said, is that what I called you? And he said, uh, 